Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia and welcome back to episode 4 of Let's Talk Lore 8 Princes series. Last episode, we ended with the death of Sima Yan and the fallout that followed. Runan Wang, Sima Liang is on the run, and Yang Jun has gained the firm control of the government. What could go wrong? Well, for one, Jia Nanfeng, the wife of Sima Zhong, is not mentally challenged herself and is not going to sit idly by as her husband, the emperor, becomes a mere puppet in Yang Jun's plans. So in this episode, we'll focus on the power struggles between the regent Yang Jun and the empress Jia Nanfeng as the first round of the Eight Princes Civil War has already begun. Let's start by learning a bit more about Yang Jun. When we last saw him, he has seized power as the regent and has Sima Liang on the run. However, we'll soon find out that Yang Jun never intended to carry out his plan to attack Sima Liang because he was afraid. See, unlike most generals in the Three Kingdom era, Yang Jun has actually never led men into battle or fought in one himself. He became a general entirely because he was part of the powerful Yang clan and rode through its rank as his niece became empress and then rose up some more ranks when his daughter became the next empress. It also didn't help that he was not well versed in court and ceremonial rules, which led to many blunders following the death of Sima Yan. For example, at the time it was customary to keep the old emperor's name on the calendar for one full year after his death to show respect, but Yang Jun changed it before the one year period of mourning was up. While it seems like a small error and not a big deal to us, it caught the eyes of the educated class and the court officials, and they took it as a sign that Yang Jun was not respecting the throne and few wanted to be associated with him. In the year that followed Sima Yan's death, Yang Jun took measures to control the idiot emperor. Worried that those close to the emperor would sway the emperor against him, he sent two of his nephews to serve the emperor as uncastrated eunuchs to essentially keep eyes and ears on the emperor at all time. Government decrees that came to the emperor for approval ended up with Empress Dowager Yang Zhi, who made the final decisions as the extension of her father Yang Jun. These actions irritated Jia Nanfeng, who is now the empress. Empress Jia, being the cruel and violent person that she is, struck fear in Yang Jun. But since she is now empress, Yang Jun found it difficult to remove her. So to prevent her from making any potential moves in the capital, Yang Jun replaced the imperial guard captains with his own men. This move caused widespread outrage among the court nobles and regional kings, as it is essentially a soft military coup. For Jia Nanfeng, this move backed her into a corner, as it meant her life was potentially now in danger. So she wrote a secret letter to Runan Wang Sima Liang, who has long returned to his land in Runan after seeing that Yang Jun never intended to follow through with his military plans. But upon seeing the letter, Sima Liang writes back to the empress that Yang Jun is a fool and his actions will lead to his own destruction soon enough, and that the empress should not feel threatened. Basically, the old fox doesn't want to get involved, so Jia Nanfeng writes a second letter to Chu Wang, Sima Wei, who is another one of our eight princes. Here we can see his in-game portrait, and at the time that Empress Jia writes out to him, he had just turned 21. So why has the empress turned to this young man in her time of desperation? And who is Sima Wei? Let's start by looking at Sima family tree again. Sima Wei was the fifth son of this emperor Sima Yan and the younger brother of the current emperor Sima Zhong. In the year 289, just month before falling ill, Sima Yan had the foresight to grant his third son Sima Jian, fifth son Sima Wei, and tenth son Sima Chong the titles of king and grant them key lands surrounding the capital so that if their older brother, the future emperor Sima Zhong, ever needed help, then he can rely on these three younger brothers and their armies in emergencies. At the time, Sima Wei has already made a name for himself as a decisive general and as the inventor of various torture and punishment techniques. Given his youth, Sima Wei was eager to prove himself and when he received the letter, he quickly RSVP'd to the party. So first, Sima Wei made a formal request to the central government asking if he could leave his post and head to the capital. Although this was a strange request, Yang Jun, for reasons unknown to history, approved Sima Wei's request, 
which proved to be his ultimate downfall. Even though the rationale were never recorded in history, here are my best guesses to why Yang Jun didn't prevent this clearly dangerous Chu Wang, Sima Wei, from coming to the capital. My first guess is that Yang Jun knew Sima Wei was dangerous, so he thought if Sima Wei indeed wanted to overthrow him, then it would be much easier to control him in the capital than in his given land of Chu. After all, we saw Yang Jun trying to summon Sima Liang out of Runan following Sima Yan's death under the same rationale. However, the situation here is a bit different, as Sima Wei intends to bring his army with him, which I believe was part of his request, while when Yang Jun asked Sima Liang to come to the capital for the funeral, he was asking him to come alone. So a better reason is that Yang Jun realized that he couldn't actually stop Sima Wei from coming unless he was willing to go to war with him. Perhaps Yang Jun was smart enough to know that Sima Wei's formal request was just for formalities, and that he was coming with his army regardless of the answer. Therefore, by approving, Yang Jun can at least gain the moral high ground and the support of the people if Sima Wei ends up planning a coup in the capital. Both of these reasons give Yang Jun incredible amount of credit for his mental prowess. Knowing what is to come, I believe the best explanation is that he was simply too foolish and full of his absolute control over the capital that he simply did not see this youngster in Sima Wei as a big enough threat to prevent him from coming to the capital. So in the March of the year 291, less than a year after the death of Sima Yan, Sima Wei arrives at the capital with his army, and Empress Jia feels emboldened to make her move. In the days following Sima Wei's arrival, plans were quickly made, and on a fateful night in March, Emperor Sima Zhong, under the instruction of his wife, Empress Jia, decreed that the regent Yang Jun had long disrespected the throne and is secretly plotting to overthrow the emperor, so he is to be stripped of his titles and brought to justice. At the same time, Sima Wei and his armies quickly took control of the imperial palace to ensure the safety of the emperor and empress and transfer the complete control of the imperial guards to Sima Yao, who was the emperor's uncle. Sima Yao then proceeded to lay siege to the home of Yang Jun with the 400 imperial guards as Sima Wei's men attempted to take over the rest of the capital. Now, Sima Yao is not one of the eight princes, but he was the third son of Sima Zhou, who was the fourth son of the legendary Sima Yi. As you can probably see, the Sima family tree is huge, and I'm only providing these small segments just to provide a little bit of background and context whenever a new Sima shows up. But don't feel pressure to know them all, as only the important ones will be given pictures and in-depth discussions. Just know that Sima Yao was the emperor's uncle, and led the imperial guards to attack the home of Yang Jun. Now, Yang Jun at the time was living in the old residence of Cao Shuang, who was a co-regent alongside Sima Yi way back in the early days of Kingdom of Wei. We briefly mentioned Cao Shuang in episode 1, when we talked about Sima Yi's coup against him two years before Sima Yi's death. What is interesting about Cao Shuang's residence is that when he had built it originally, he placed it right by the armory in the capital as a way to protect himself against potential coups because the proximity would allow him to arm his men first. Another fun fact is that after Cao Shuang was captured in the coup, he was placed under house arrest by Sima Yi, and Sima Yi constructed numerous tall guard towers surrounding his residence to constantly spy and guard over Cao Shuang. With the knowledge of these two trivia facts about Cao Shuang's residence, we can now explain how Yang Jun dies. During that night that Empress Jia and Sima Wei made their moves, Yang Jun had a chance to mobilize his men and fight back. However, despite advice from his strategists to mobilize against the emperor, Yang Jun was afraid and was too indecisive, which lost him valuable time. While he was nervously debating his next steps, Sima Yao and his 400 imperial guards arrived and took control of all the guard towers surrounding the residence and showered the residence with fire arrows, preventing any of Yang Jun's men to come out to arm themselves from the armory. As Yang Jun tried to escape on horseback, he was found in the stables and killed. The result of Yang Jun's death was the eradication of the Yang clan and their associates, as Empress Jia issued decrees in the emperor's name, sending thousands to the chopping block, 
and even the Empress Dowager Yang Zhi was stripped of her title and imprisoned. And you would think that to the victors goes the spoils. But even though now Empress Jia had full control of her husband Sima Zhong, and a promotion was handed out to Sima Wei for his role to overthrow the regent Yang Jun, the court nobles elected to have Wei Guan, the Grand Tutor, and Sima Liang, the much-respected elder of the Sima clan, to become a new co-regent for the kingdom. This news upset Empress Jia greatly because she already despises Wei Guan from the earlier days when his daughter almost replaced her as Sima Zhong's wife, and from Wei Guan's earlier stances on replacing Sima Zhong as the crown prince. She also held a grudge against Sima Liang, as he was unwilling to lend a hand when she wrote to him about Yang Jun. Sima Wei, on the other hand, was enjoying his new life in the capital. The people loved him for disposing Yang Jun, and he wanted to leverage his newfound fame into political capital at the court, so he had no intention of leading his army back to his given land. Sima Liang and Wei Guan scolded him and asked him to leave as it was improper for a regional king to be away from his land and definitely improper for regional kings to garrison their forces in the capital, especially now there is no danger in the capital. Sima Wei resented these two old men for the high positions they gained, even though it was he who disposed Yang Jun. So he thought they were just jealous and proceeded to ignore their request. Then Sima Liang tried to take away Sima Wei's armies by assigning a new general to replace him. But the new general was so afraid of Sima Wei that he refused to go to his post. So the resentment level between Sima Liang and Sima Wei were at an all-time high following Yang Jun's death. Sima Wei's resentment was however picked up by Empress Jia, and a plan was formed. So on another fateful night, just three months after overthrowing Yang Jun, a eunuch messenger secretly arrives at Sima Wei's garrison with a secret degree from the emperor stating that the co-regents of Wei Guan and Sima Liang are plotting another coup to replace the mentally challenged Emperor Sima Zhong, and that Sima Wei is to arrest these two traitors. Although it was hard to believe that these two old and respected men would do such a thing, it was also well known that Wei Guan had always doubted the capabilities of his mentally challenged student. It also helped that even if it was unbelievable, Sima Wei suddenly now have official reason to depose two of the men who had been trying to chase him from his pursuit of fame and glory in the capital. So armed with a secret decree, Sima Wei issued orders to all the armed forces in the capital to stand down as he arrested Sima Liang and Wei Guan. Neither men put up a fight and thought to argue their innocence the next day. And all their associates were told that they were free to go as the decree only asked for the rest of the two co-regents, so no one resisted the rest. However, the secret decree in reality had asked Sima Wei to kill these two regents. So after a peaceful arrest, both Sima Liang and Wei Guan were executed. So for those of you who are planning to play the Eight Princes DLC and were worried that we were still on a five turn a year basis, and thought Sima Liang's starting age was a bit high, well in history, he lasts about two turns in the game before dying in June of 291. After Sima Wei killed both regents, his close advisor, Qi Sheng, advised him to make a move against Empress Jia by eliminating her cousins who were now in high court positions, thus enabling him, Sima Wei, to take over as a new regent. Sima Wei did not agree to this plan, as he saw his arrests and executions of the co-regents not as a power grab, but as he only did it at the request of the emperor through the secret decree. Little did he know, Empress Jia had other plans. The very next morning, an official public decree was issued out of the palace that Sima Wei forged a secret decree in the name of the emperor to arrest and kill the co-regents Sima Liang and Wei Guan. Hearing this official decree, Sima Wei was shocked and his men laid down their arms as imperial guards arrived to arrest Sima Wei. Without a trial, Sima Wei was promptly executed. Before his death, he handed out the secret decree to the executioner and lamented out to the crowds who have gathered to mourn this popular general that as the fifth son of the late emperor Sima Yan, he had only ever wanted to serve the throne 
and that he was framed for his crimes. To no avail, the sword swung and the head rolled. In just three short months, Empress Jia utilized the blunt instrument that was Sima Wei to clear the board of all opposition before assuming full control of the government. With Sima Liang and Sima Wei's death, the first chapter of the Eight Princes Civil War is closed. For the next eight years, the kingdom, ruled by Empress Jia and her associates, prospered and grew. But this temporary peace will end in the year 299, with the new round of the Civil War on a much grander scale. To find out what triggered round two of the Eight Princes Civil War, come back tomorrow as we introduce a new prince, Sima Lun, to our story. This concludes episode four of the Eight Princes edition of Let's Talk Lore. Hope y'all enjoyed the episode. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to support the channel and to get notifications when new videos are released. Thank you again for watching and see y'all next time. Bye!